Hey guys, in this session we are going to talk about activities and fragments in Android. Basically, activities are one of the four components of every Android application. The other three are broadcast receivers, services, and content providers, which we will see in future videos, but in this session we will see the usages and the meaning of activities. If you remember from Java sessions, when we created a simple Java class, when we wanted to have a starting point, a beginning point for our application, we could create a main method, for example, like this in here. And uh, whatever the code is inside that main method is the code that will run uh, at the running time uh, first. For example, uh, right now, if I run this application, I should see this little message printed in the console. Activities in Android are uh, designed to handle different situations which one is the which one is being the starting point of our application and uh, also a lot more of these situations for example let's create an application uh, an activity in here we know how to create an activity up until now we have came to this new activity and uh, by choosing an empty activity we could create one there are other ways which we will see in a few minutes but for now, let's continue our old way. This onCreate method of this main activity is the equivalent to this main method in Java file. It means that this onCreate will trigger at the beginning of creating our activity or if it's, it's the launcher activity at the beginning of running our application. Uh, languages like Python and uh, Java, they need to have this main method in order to run any application that has been wrote, uh, written to those languages. But in Android system, we have a much more complex and uh, much more useful thing called activities that can uh, handle uh, that issue via this onCreate method. There are a lot more situations that uh, our activities can handle. For example, uh, if we navigate through uh, different uh, applications or if we ha receive some uh, calls uh, when we are working with an application we will see all of those situations uh, in few minutes when we talk about uh, activities life cycle but for now let's talk a little more about activities themselves basically every activity is a java class which uh, inherited from the activity superclass or in here app compat activity this app compat we will talk about it later on in uh, future videos but for now you just need to know that this is another uh, extension of activity superclass which will help our application to be uh, able to have uh, some functionalities in older versions of Android we will talk uh, a, lot, a lot more about this app compat but uh, notice that if I type activity in here, this still is a main activity. Okay, let's change it to app compat activity. Also, when we create uh, activities, we need to declare them in the manifest file as well. Right now, uh, we use the help of IntelliJ to create this activity for us. So it uh, added this line of code in the manifest file, but if we create activities manually, we need to add this line of code in here ourselves. Let's create an activity manually to see how can we create it without the help of IntelliJ. For that, I need to create a simple Java class. Uh, as I mentioned a few times for now, the convention for the naming uh, of the activities is that uh, you type uh, the name of your activity and add the activity phrase at the end of it. For example, I can say test activity in here. Nothing to change. As I talked right now, it, it needs to extend from the activity class or app compat activity. The IntelliJ is giving me some warning. It says that uh, the activity needs to be declared in the manifest. Let's add it to the manifest. Inside uh, the applications tag and uh, in here I need to say, say activity, test activity, and that's it. Uh, now I have uh, an activity, but my activity doesn't have any layout file to show to the user. We can initialize the layout inside the onCreate method uh, of our activity. Let's quickly override that. 
I don't need this part in here. Uh, if you notice in the main activity, this method, this inner method, set content view, handles the different situations, the initializing of the view. I can say set content view, but in order to do that, in order to pass a layout, I need to have a layout. So I need to create one in this layout file in this resources folder. Let's create a layout resource file. I'm going to call it uh, test activity test as the convention is to reverse the name. Notice that you shouldn't use any capital letters in here. I'm going to change this one to relative layout as well. Uh, let's add a text in here so that we know we are inside another activity. Okay, I, now I can add, uh, pass the address of this activity in here. Let's say r.layout.activitytest. I have done everything that uh, needs to be done in order to create an activity. Basically, IntelliJ uh, go through all of these uh, steps for us, but we can uh, create uh, activities uh, ourselves. Okay, now let's have a quick look at the activity lifecycle that I just mentioned. Activity lifecycle is a phrase for demonstrating different situations that an activity can go through from the creation to destroying process. By now you should be aware of that uh, the first thing, the first method that uh, is, be, is executed in every activity is this onCreate method. We can initialize different views or onClick listeners for different buttons inside this onCreate. After that, this onStart method will be triggered. Next, we have this onResume. We will talk about the differences between these two. After this on resume, uh, the activity will be showed to the user. But uh, for example, when uh, our application is being closed, there are few steps uh, to go through as well. First is this on pause, then this on stop. We will talk about the differences between these two, then this on destroy method. But notice that this on destroy method uh, is not reliable and in some cases it cannot um, be executed. So uh, you shouldn't put that much code in this on destroy method. But launching and uh, exiting an application is not the only situation that activities can handle. There are many more situations. For example, uh, consider using your application and you receive some phone call. Uh, activities can handle that situation that can uh, that won't be destroyed that uh, activity instead it will go to this unstop method we won't go through uh, that onCreate method once again when we come back from a, a phone call we will uh, start from this unstart method there are other situations as well for example when your application loses the user's focus uh, for example, when the user receives some uh, notification, your, app, your activity needs to go through some phases as well. Uh, for example, in this situation, it will go through uh, this on pause method, and whenever the user comes back, uh, it will go through on resume. In a real life application, you need to handle different situations for your uh, activities and for your application. For example, if you want to open some file, you also need to close it. You can do it uh, via this unstop or on destroy method. Or if you want to connect the application to the internet, you need to do the connection in somewhere and uh, close the connection in somewhere else. Uh, let's quickly have an example and see the usages of all of these methods. For that, I will create a simple application. But first, let's close this one this uh, currently running project let's create another one this time i will uh, choose this add no activity and uh, i will add it manually myself okay let's call it activities and leave everything else as default in order to add the activity i can come here and say new activity in this simple application i will uh, just uh, add some logins in order to track different situations let's add the log up in here log t first of all uh, 
after instantly after the creation of this onCreate method a log d let's say it started in order to handle different uh, situations that I just talked about I need to override those methods you need to uh, you know how to uh, override some methods by pressing control o or command o in a mac uh, you can have a list of uh, overridable methods for that i will type uh, on a stop for example let's log something in here to start it also let's override on a start this is another way of uh, implement or overriding methods you know that to start it we have on pause and on resume we had that on restart if you remember and also the on destroy method let's quickly run our application and see the different uh, situations but in order to launch my application i need to add something to the manifest file because we created this uh, activity manually um, this activity doesn't have any launcher or main in its uh, declaration so i need to pass them manually uh, here is another tag uh, called intent filter we will see a lot of this uh, in future videos but for now let's just use it uh, basically we filter different uh, intents or different uh, categories that every activity can receive and handle we will talk a lot more about intent filters in uh, future videos I need to pass the action to main act, uh, action dot main, and also I need to pass a category as launcher. Means that this is the launcher activity of our application. At least uh, one activity in your application needs to have this uh, syntax in order to be able to launch your application. Okay, let's quickly run it in our emulator. Let's switch to this logcat pane in here. Make sure to choose the right emulator, the right application, and uh, choose this show only selected application. Also, I uh, suggest to clear your logcat before using it. Also, I can uh, use this uh, regex in order to search for the text that I want to uh, look at. Okay, let's run it once again in order to show the logs. And uh, notice it will show only the logs that has the, this started in it. If I delete this, I can see all of them, but I don't need them. As you can see, uh, because my application is created now, this on create method is started, then this on start, then this on resume, as we just seen that uh, schematic. Uh, right now, if I click on this uh, button, this home button in here, our application won't close but uh, it will uh, lose the user's uh, attention for that it has uh, it's gone through on pause and then on stop and uh, if i go back to my application from here on restart on start and then on resume has been um, executed uh, I can't see that uh, on pause and on resume uh, right now because we can't receive any notification or anything else by now but we will be its usage when we directly go through on pause and then uh, we'll come back from on resume for now let's simulate the on destroy as well uh, if I press this back button my application will be closed and uh, the application will go through on destroy method and as you can see in here the on pause, on stop, and on destroy method has been executed. But notice that uh, if I run my application once again, this on destroy method is not reliable. For example, if I uh, close it from here, that method won't be executed, and our application is now uh, closed. Uh, so no, uh, you shouldn't be doing uh, important stuff on that uh, on destroy method. Okay, this video is getting a little bit long. In the next video, we will continue our, our talk on activities and especially uh, about uh, communicating between activities. Okay, see you in that next video.